This is Charlie Claw World Sports Show, joined by Anya Badalino from the Connecticut Whale, part of the new Women's Professional League here in the United States. I want to thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So a very exciting weekend. You guys had a pretty, pretty hefty victory over New York. Yeah, that, that's one word for it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it was a, a game that featured a hat trick, um, I guess a lot of distribution of goals. What does that do for your team and your mentality when you get such a big win, especially on the road? So what we do kind of when it comes to the scoring process and, and the team, we definitely look at it in terms of who's going to contribute and how much can they really give. So, you know, we don't look for one player. We don't put all of our eggs in one basket. It's nice to see that distribution kind of come throughout and see the passing. And, you know, every single one of Cheyenne's goals was a great play. You know, we try not to sit down and rely on one person to go end to end and snipe. We look at where are the plays coming from, where are the passes, who's open, what hockey looks like. And, you know, from, from where we were and what we were doing, we had such a strong team effort for that victory, and it was a lot of fun to see it all kind of unfold, like you said, at the beginning of the game. And what's this season been like? It's the inaugural season. There's four teams in the league, and you're, you're starting to get a lot of buzz, and then you guys got a lot of publicity with, you know, one of your teams playing in the Women's Winter Classic. Yeah, that was awesome. I was actually there. I got to sit in the stands and live tweet about it from our team Twitter. Um, for the first year, the league has been amazing. It's been a whirlwind of emotion. It's been so much fun. and It's so, been so instrumental in what women's hockey looks like. You know, we're no longer just women's hockey players or, you know, volunteering our time in a women's hockey league. We're getting paid. We have insurance. We have all the benefits. And so for us, it's, it's this great experience where, we can start developing and creating, you know, more of a hometown feel where we can spend time with fans. We can do all the things that players should have the right to do because we're getting paid and we're professionals and, you know, you know, it's kind of taking off bigger than we even thought it was going to. And it's so much fun to watch us get our Dunkin' Donuts gift cards and us to be in the frozen, I mean, in the um, winter classic and kind of do all of these things it's, it's an amazing experience and it, it's so much fun to just kind of be on the train and be there for the ride yeah it's definitely neat you know that's how you and i got hooked up as you were tweeting during the game and I, and I started following you know your tweets during the game and made it you know very fan oriented that you don't get a lot of that in this professional sports where you have the players you know reaching out to the fans and being kind of spokespeople for the league yeah, and it's, it's a really great model because, you know, there's nothing more exciting to me than coming face-to-face -face with a fan that follows my tweets, that follows my posts on Instagram. And, and that's so much fun for me because I do really think about those tweets and I do really think about the media that I get to put out there because for us, we don't have moguls doing all of our PR accounts. We don't have all these things. We have ourselves and our drive and our passion. And, you know, the fans coming to our game is the reason that we're even here. And so for me especially I know, you know, all of us kind of get behind it and have a lot of fun with it, but it's just such a great experience to say, okay, you're going to go to a men's pro game, which is awesome and so much fun. And I enjoy it myself, but how many times after the game are you going to sit down and have a 20 minute conversation with one of the players? And that's what we do at the NWHL. We always do a signing at the end of the game. We're always chatting with fans. We're always tweeting back and forth, joking around. I know, um, one of my one of my favorite Riveters fans actually makes signs for all of us, and I always can't wait to see what he wrote. You know, like he had Kaylee Crack and already broke her New Year's resolution, and all these funny things. And it's just a lot of fun to be connected and say, you know, hey, I saw your your you know signs yesterday. So much fun, or you know, chirping back and kind of have that fun fan interaction. Where I think that's really where we're able to provide a better experience and definitely give them a lot more of a hands-on feel. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, a, a very family-oriented and fan-friendly fan where you have the interaction. And, and, I mean, is there times where you get to pinch yourself that you're, you're signing autographs and, and you're taking pictures with these fans? Is this something you ever dreamed would ever happen to you? No, so it's always so funny. I, I kind of, um, in college, you know, you get used to it, little kids coming over with their little bees jerseys and they want them signed, and, and that's a blast. And that's something that I, you know, first signature I ever put on someone's jersey, I was – almost near tears because it was so cool that somebody wanted to know a little bit more about me. And so now, you know, I played in college and then I played in the, in the Canadian league and then I'm now I'm playing here and, you know, my numbers changed, my signatures changed. I've, I've done a bunch of things and it's so funny to watch myself even think to change my signature or <laughs> to add a new number in. It's so random that I'm 
just me that grew up in a small town and, you know, now someone wants my autograph and that's surreal. I always ask the fans, I sit down with a little notepad and I say, give me your autograph, you know, to the little girls. And I say, I'm going to keep this one day until you're in my seat and it's going to be worth a lot of money. And, you know, we joke around and I have so much fun having the little girls start signing me something because when I was little, no one ever asked for a woman's autograph. And now people ask for mine every day. Yeah, it's a very, you know, neat, you know, thing with women's sports, you know, with the Women's Hockey League and you have the WNBA and you have the NWSL Women's Soccer League that, you know, that these young girls that come through games will actually have legitimate role models. You know, they can look up to an NHL player and say, I, I want to be him when I grow up. But in reality, now they actually can have female players and they can strive to have these type of goals to accomplish. Right. And that's that's kind of what we're here for. And, you know, I know we talked about it off the uh, off the air, but we, you know, I'm a big fan of the Boston Breakers and and what they do for for girls playing soccer and you know through all of their programs and what they do and you know we just try to get involved the same way. So whether it's with youth sports, becoming coaches, or it's throwing clinics, or it's doing some of those things. I know as a Boston resident, I used to grow up going to the fan zone at the Boston Breakers game when they played at BU. And watching those players sit down and talk to us, I never even could kick a soccer ball. I'm the worst soccer player in America. But I had so much respect, and I was like, Christine Lilly is a great player, and that's amazing. And, you know, I want to be an athlete like she was. And so for me, maybe <laughs> maybe I can't even kick a soccer ball straight, but I have so much fun watching fans interact with women in general in sports. And so we definitely try to do the same thing and provide that ability for a little girl and a little boy which we have tons of little boys come to our game and say, wow, that's a pro athlete. You know, they don't look at me and say, that's a woman. They say, that's a pro athlete. I want her signature, and that's very cool. Yeah, I think that's another thing you mentioned, you know, when it, it's – it's you, you people stop looking at it as being a woman or a girl playing, that it's just an athlete. And I hear that a lot with professional athletes, that you don't have to put the sex of the athlete in front of it. Just put professional athlete or amateur athlete or whatever college athlete. And I think that, you know, players like you are starting to – change that you know perception you know professional sports that when you just watch a game and you just watch the footage of it it's professional athletes yeah and that's the best part where people start to drop the word women and start to add the word professional is really where we make ourselves um you know kind of define ourselves as more you know the more we say this is a women's professional league or where I'm a woman's pro athlete or, you know, I play women's professional ice hockey. I try to always drop that word because if you look at me, you can tell I'm a woman. You don't have to identify what I'm doing as a gender. You have to identify what I'm doing is the level that I'm at. I get paid to play hockey. I'm a professional. And so it's so fun to watch little kids and parents and fans. And, you know, not all of our fans are young. Some of them just love sports and some of them just – appreciate good hockey and that's where we're seeing that that word woman is falling and the word professional is capitalizing yeah because you guys i've seen the games i've watched the games i watched a little bit of your game sunday and you guys are not afraid to hit each other and sometimes the gloves drop you know yeah it's, it's definitely one of those things where you put on the helmet and you almost kind of forget you know what you're doing or you get a little wrapped up in the moment and for me at least i know a lot of us try to keep the game really skill oriented and clean and you know, nothing nothing I hate to see more than people lose their sense of respect for the game. You know, back in the day people used to say I went to a boxing match and a hockey game broke out. Yeah. And that's not what I want. You know, you yeah. kinda of want them to see what the game is and see what opportunities we can create for ourselves. Now at the same time, do you get a little heated, do you have your gear on and you forget and you you kinda of throw an elbow or you get a little grimy in front of the net. Yeah, it's gonna happen. You know, and, and women no more than or no less than men get frustrated and, you know, those tempers flare. And sometimes, yeah, I'll admit as a fan, it does get me a little excited to watch something like that. But, you know, um, especially in the game on Sunday, what we want to do is kind of refocus that energy and say, yeah, those things are going to happen. Let's try to eliminate them because we want to define ourselves as role models and we don't want people to think that's the conflict resolution that we're, we're kind of leaning towards. Now, I think the neat part, like you said, is I want to go back and touch a little bit on the social media aspect, that, that how much this league has grown just through that. I mean, that's how I'm finding a lot of my news, and that's how you and I got hooked up is through Twitter, it, that each one of you have almost embraced that role of being like social media ambassadors for the league. Yeah, it's actually such a good um, grassroots way to really cultivate a following. 
so instead of saying, you know, plastering it on billboards, which I wouldn't mind to be 40 feet tall on a billboard, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. But, you know, just kind of organically saying, hi, this is what I'm about. This is how I talk. This is the jokes I make. This is the pictures I'll post. You know, I'll post a selfie and it'll be the silliest picture ever, but I'll get fans favoriting, retweeting, liking it, commenting on it, messaging me, everything. And that's what I love. I love when they can get a little bit of me, and that's such a good place for social media to insert themselves. It's saying, hi, this is a direct line to my cell phone, and this is the nonsense that I decide to retweet, or <laughs> this is the silliness that I'll, I'll kind of say. And you know, that's where I feel like we all saw that that was the best avenue and said, okay, we're all going to do that. And where we can generate opportunities like this one and start connecting with companies and start getting involved with charities and organizations and all of these things. It's, it's a great grassroots place to say, this is who I am. This is what I support. You can follow me on my mission or you don't have to follow me. You can follow someone else. I, you know, it's a great place for us to kind of be our own pioneers. And another thing too, that you guys are doing right with the, the business model is, is you're a young league and you're in your infant stage is I think a lot of the leagues in, in North America, sometimes they'll fail because they, try to get, I want to say, too big too fast is they're playing in too big of arenas where you're telling me you guys are playing in small arenas, and, and but you're packing them, so it, it's a better product to go see. Oh, yeah, it's so much fun. You know, there's nothing better than being shoulder to shoulder with a, a Boston fan at a, a Connecticut game at Connecticut home, and you say, oh, that was, you know, that was a dirty hit, and they go, no, it wasn't, and you're like, all right, like, let's, like, you know, go Boston, go Connecticut, and you kind of have that little pull, and that's so much fun because, what you miss and what you lose when you get in a rink that's too large is you miss the connectivity. You know, you miss the fact that you could be cheering for A and someone could be cheering for B and that's okay and that's fun and you can have a good time and you can laugh about it. And, you know, that's where I love the rink that we play at. Um, you know, Chelsea Beers is such a beautiful arena because it, you know, it's got a nice gym for us. It's got all this room. It's got, you know, it's, it's new. And so it's so much fun, but it's also small and it's quaint and it's, it's compact and it feels like, home and so a lot of us have a lot of fun being able to say okay there's only 900 tickets for this game who wants to be there the most you know who's going to make the extra effort who's going to get the ticket before it sells out and that's where you know we have a ton of fun by trying to get fans in and packing the stadium and watching people you know kind of shuffle in and and go shoulder to shoulder on the glass just to see us so much fun yeah, it's a good color scheme you guys have got with the connecticut you know team you're, you're the old tribute to the Hartford Whalers colors. So I'm sure that was really cool because I'm sure you're spotting some pretty old jerseys in the, in the, in the stands. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun and, and kind of watching people shuffle in in the first couple games with the Connecticut Whalers jerseys and, and seeing the Whalers hats. And, you know, slowly but surely the league starts releasing some of the apparel and the gear. And, and we have, you know, I think a blogger put us to rank all of the jerseys from like pro all the way down to, um, you know, I think it was like amateur league, anything like that. We were ranked number six. So it's really cool because out of all of those jerseys, out of all those colors, out of all of those names, we're up there. And so when we start seeing our own jerseys next to the Whalers jerseys, it's such a great um, partnership where we're saying, yeah, we do appreciate that old Whalers good time hockey, but also come on in and try being a whale fan. It's a little different, but you know, you're going to really enjoy the experience and, and that's something Connecticut was missing was that pro team that they could all rally behind, and they're getting it now. Yeah, it's such an interesting area, especially the Connecticut area here, that kind of that torn area. you got half New England fans, half New York fans, but this is something they can identify with just their team. Right. Well, I know you have a, a lot to do today and wish your team and the league the best of success. You know, definitely looking into getting to a game and, you know, keep doing what you're doing on the social media aspect, you know, that – it's how you and I hooked up, and it's it's how the league grows. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate, you know, kind of when people decide, okay, we're going to move into this space, or we're going to find out a little bit, or dip your toe in the water, because it's addicting once you start following women's hockey, or once you start following, you know, women's soccer, or, you know, women's basketball, or any kind of women's sport, you start to think, like I said, you drop the woman, and you go, that's a great hockey team. That's a great hockey organization. That's a great soccer team. That's a great basketball team. You know, and so that's where I love to watch people start getting involved because it's, you know, it's addicting. They're going to just take off like wildfire. I want to also tell you, we might have to help each other out. You may not be able to kick a soccer ball, but believe it or not, I cannot ice skate. I've tried it a couple of 
it's been very, very ugly and funny. So we'll, we'll, I'll teach you um, how to kick a ball, and you can teach me how to ice skate. I love it. I love it. Let's get that in the book. All right. Thank you so much for calling in. Thanks so much for having me. Have a great day. You too. Bye.